Welcome to our third video in our series on photosynthesis. In this video, we're going to look at photophosphorylation. How is ATP made during photosynthesis? We know that both in the cyclic and the non-cyclic pathways of the light reactions, we form ATP. We said that the electron would be passed down an electron transport chain and energy is given off to make ATP. And then I kept saying kind of. And the same thing in the non-cyclic pathway. So the question is, and what we're going to do in this video, is look at how. How is ATP made during photosynthesis? It's called photophosphorylation because we're phosphorylating ADP into ATP during photosynthesis. We learned about ATP in this reaction in our video on ATP earlier in our metabolism unit. But the, the driving force that's going to drive this production is a process or a situation called chemiosmosis. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. To see how this happens, we have to look at the light reactions that we did before, but in a slightly different way. Uh, the diagrams we did before, and I'll go back up to those, uh, like this one and this one, uh, showed some of the structure, but it was more of a schematic diagram. Um, and this uh, diagram we're going to see kind of more realistically what's happening. Here is our thylakoid membrane and embedded in the thylakoid membrane we have our photosystems, photosystem 2 P680 and photosystem 1 P700 and we have our electron transport chains uh, here a cytochrome complex and here um, I'm going to hold off on telling you what this one is called um, but this is our structure we said it's embedded in the in the membrane so if we begin, light strikes an electron in photosystem 2, causing that electron to be boosted in energy so that it's a high energy electron. That high energy electron gets picked up by an electron acceptor. It's called plastoquinone. Plastoquinone is going to carry this high energy electron over to this electron transport chain. Now the electron wants to go down this electron transport chain. However, in order to go down this electron transport chain, it must first grab a proton, or an H+, a hydrogen ion. As the electron goes down, it pulls the proton with it. And the hydrogen ion, or the proton, gets pumped to the inside of the thylakoid membrane. And the electron is now back to its ground state. It's no longer a, as high an energy electron as it was before. Recalling that this is the non-cyclic pathway, the electron doesn't go back to uh, P680. Instead, it falls into uh, P700 of photosystem 1. As it moves into photosystem 1, it could again be struck by light and boosted to a higher energy level. This high energy electron bounces around the photosystem, gets to reaction center, and then gets picked up by an electron acceptor. In this case, it's called ferrodoxin. This electron acceptor, ferrodoxin, will deliver this high energy electron to a second electron transport chain. The electron goes down this short electron transport chain and then gets picked up by a molecule called NADP+. This electron transport chain is not just a transport for electrons, it's also an enzyme. It's called NADP plus reductase. When we reduce something, we do that by adding a negative charge, adding an electron, so NADP plus would be reduced. But in order to be reduced, it also has to grab a proton, an H, and become NADPH. This NADPH is carrying that high energy electron and will deliver it to the Calvin cycle. But remember, this video wasn't about making NADPH. It was about making ATP. And if we look back, when we look at this diagram, we see that it was during the first electron transport chain that we said electrons, uh, or sorry, that energy was given off to make ATP. In this diagram, when we went down the first ETC, all we did was pump a proton from the outside to the inside. Now, 
we need to understand a little bit, remind ourselves about the nature of this membrane, this thylakoid membrane. You notice that it's built from these phospholipids, uh, this bilayer of phospholipids. And if you go back to your old notes about the nature of membranes, we know that um, this membrane is not very permeable to, to ions. So once ions get stuck on one side of this membrane, they tend to stay there. Let's hold on to that thought. Now, what happens if we do this again? If we boost an electron to a higher energy and go down this system, when we send this electron down this ETC, we'd pump another proton in, we'd come down here and we'd make another NADPH, and then if we did it again, we'd pump another proton in, and every time we send an electron through this system, we are essentially creating a proton pump, and we're filling up the inside of this with H pluses or protons. But, remember, this is non-cyclic, and we had the problem before in our other video uh, when we did just the light reactions that if we keep sending electrons out of photosystem 2 without replenishing them, we're going to run out. So, we need to add water. During the light reactions, we split water through a process called photolysis. Doing that allows the water to donate electrons to, to P680 to replenish the ones lost uh, through the light reactions. And so that's going to give us more electrons to keep sending down this system, which is going to then, uh, let me make a couple more of these, give us more um, uh, energy as, uh, and more uh, pumping action to pump even more hydrogens to the inside of the thylakoid. But it's, there's an interesting thing here. Every time we split water, we actually create two more protons, two more hydrogen ions. So these hydrogen ions from water are also accumulating inside the thylakoid membrane. So we have two sources of protons. The proton pump of the electron transport chain right here, but also the splitting of water. The end result is that inside the thylakoid membrane we generate a concentration gradient, a proton gradient, all these H pluses on the inside. And they want to move down their concentration gradient, they want to move out but they're trapped in because they're ionic, they're charged, they can't get through this bilipid layer. Now how do ions get out of this membrane down their concentration gradient? Well, they have to find a channel. And here we have a channel protein, a little uh, funnel for them to go out of. The process by which they would travel would be facilitated diffusion. They're going down their concentration gradient and they're being helped by a channel protein. So these protons will rush out of this special channel. And this channel is special. It has this interesting name. It's called ATP synthase. We know that in biology, anything that ends in the suffix ASE is an enzyme. And in this case, it's the enzyme that synthesizes ATP. So let's think about what we know about how we make ATP. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is made from ADP, adenosine diphosphate, plus a phosphate, plus energy. So where do we have that? Let's go back here. If I have ADP and P, all I need is energy. This enzyme helps catalyze this reaction, ADP plus P, helps tie them together, but we need an energy source. The flow of the protons rushing out of this uh, channel, the m physical movement, the flow of ions is energy. And it's the flow of these ions out of the ATP synthase that acts as the energy for this reaction. So this proton gradient and the rushing these protons out is going to be the energy in the ADP plus P plus energy reaction. So those rushing hydrogen ions help put ADP plus P that provided the energy for that reaction. So when we said that as electrons go down electron transport chains, like here, that energy is given off to make ATP, really, as the electron went down the electron transport chain, it set up a proton gradient along with the protons, or H pluses, from the photolysis of water, which drove the chemiosmotic uh, the chemi chemiosmotic gradient and this rushing ions we call this process 
chemiosmosis. The other thing we should notice is that these hydrogen ions, these protons, also come up here and it become the H if we go back uh, just for a moment. When NADP plus picked up the electron and grabbed the hydrogen, this hydrogen is one of those hydrogens that's come out of this uh, channel and that's how we make NADPH. So we can kind of show how that relates back to where we are here at the end. So we have um, our Oops, let me grab a different pen. That's not the pen I wanted. Hold on one second. We have our proton pump that pulls these hydrogens in. We have protons from photolysis, and eventually those protons rush out through this special channel protein, which we called ATP synthase. And um, so here we have it. We have the light reactions uh, generating NADPH and ATP and both NADPH and ATP will go to the Calvin cycle which is our next video. So that's all for our third video on photosynthesis, phosphorylation, chemiosmosis. Um, the videos 4 and 5 will be on the Calvin cycle and the C4 and CAM plant so come back for those soon.